What's going on everybody? My name is Burke Cullinane and today on the Monday Challenge, we're gonna be making some golf shot tracers in Adobe After Effects. The Monday Challenge, it's back. Uh, it's been a while. Most of you may not know, I have actually been making YouTube videos on another channel called King Wolf Creative. We also have a podcast called Pints and Putts, and I recently posted this before and after style thing on my Instagram of some shot tracers that we had done for a recent video on our YouTube channel. Shameless plug, uh, hats and uh, pint glasses, stickers, all that stuff are for sale up on our website, so yeah, link in description. I've really enjoyed making these uh, these shot tracers over the past year or so, and I've kind of dialed it into my own little style with some color effects and glow effects. Um, and I figured it'd be kind of cool to just share that information on how I make those shot tracers for that YouTube channel. So this isn't really a challenge per se, but yeah, I figured this would be a, a good little tutorial for anybody who's wanting to try and figure out how to do this or just learn a little bit more about After Effects. Okay, so just diving into Premiere here, I already have the clip selected that I'm gonna be doing this effect with. So what I'll do for, for the videos is I will edit the whole thing in Premiere um, before putting any color grades or effects on it, and then the next step would be to bring the file that I'm gonna use the Shot Tracer clip for into After Effects. So what I do here is I will unlink the video and the audio file. You can either right click on the clip and go to unlink right here, or you can use Command L on Mac. Not sure what it is on PC because I'm not a PC guy. Alrighty then. I'm gonna duplicate the clip so that I just create the effect in After Effects and I'll end up putting that on a transparent file that way I can color grade and do everything else in Premiere afterwards. So in order to do that, you hold down option on your keyboard, click the file, and then drag up. So now this top file here, we're gonna bring into After Effects by right clicking and replace with After Effects composition. So now that everything's brought into After Effects, there's really only a few things that we need to do to create this effect. And the first thing is, is we're going to create a path using the pen tool. You can select your pen tool up here and then you want to make sure that nothing is selected because you want to create a new layer. So I just always click down into the timeline of the composition and then I will just put a point down. So now I'm actually going to delete that point because I want to go find where the golf ball is. So I usually like to come right before impact of the driver or the iron or whatever the, the golfer is using and just click right on the golf ball. I will actually end up muting the shape layer while I create the path, just because it's a lot easier to follow the path of the golf ball without having the path on top of the golf ball, if that makes any sense. If you weren't muting it, then you wouldn't be able to see where the path is. Now we've got the path created to a degree. Now I'm gonna be completely honest, after a certain point, you kind of lose the golf ball, especially since the clip's not color graded, there's not a ton of contrast in the image, it's, it's hard to follow it. The reason I did select this clip is because it was very easy to follow the golf ball because it was going through this blue sky and just the, the shape of the path, it was straight down the gut. Thanks, Justin. Basically what I'm trying to say is after a certain point, I'll just kind of guess. And this is an older video file, so I know he was dead down the middle. I don't exactly know where he was. Usually when we film these videos, um, pretty recently afterwards shooting the video, we will edit them. So that makes it a lot easier to, to get the uh, shot tracer pretty exact. But for the most part, for this video, I think this is pretty good. Now I need to clean up my path and actually get that little curvature of the shot shape because he had this little baby draw going on with a little loop at the top. So what I will actually do is I will only use three points on my path. I actually have four, five right now. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to hold down command on the pen tool and click 
to subtract these points away. Now to create that little curve, what you're gonna do is hold down option on your keyboard and select the top point. And then you can pull out. And if I go to the right, then it will give me that little curve thing. And that's pretty much where his, his shot shape was. So now if we kind of go back here and just scrub through. What I'm doing here is just making sure that the golf ball, I know it's really pixelated, but you can kind of see it here, is staying on that path, which it looks like it's coming a little off. So I'm gonna bring this in a bit. Yeah, it actually looks like I lost it. So I'm going to actually just move this probably about there to line that up. Yeah, and then as you, I don't know if you can see that, but the ball is pretty much on that blue line the whole time. Oh, it actually looks like it goes further than that. So yeah, just minor adjustments to line this ball right here up onto the blue line. Now that we got the path, all figured out and whatnot, it is time to create the shape and animation of the shot tracer. So now I will turn back the shape layer on and I'm actually going to fix the stroke to probably about mm, 15, I think is what I usually use. And maybe we'll go with 12. That's looking better. I think I'm gonna change the color of the stroke as well. Um, what I've been doing lately is matching the color of the golfer's shirt. So we can go with the black one on this one. I think I'm gonna do like a bluey, a dark blue just based off of his shorts. Like a dark gray blue. Then you're gonna come down into the contents of your shape. You go to stroke. And this is where we're gonna create a little bit of a taper. So this is all going to be really your choice on how you want this to look, but I like to create this little taper so that as it gets further away, quote unquote, the end of the path is thinner so that it looks like it's further away. So you come down into taper and you'll go start length 100, end length 100, start width 100, and then end width, I'll have that anywhere from 25% to 50%. And then to kind of make this look a little cleaner so it's not just this flat end point. If you go to line cap, you can go to round cap and then line joint, you go to round joint. So now to create the animation of the actual shot tracer. Come over here to the add and you're going to want to select trim paths. And this will give you the ability to create the animation. So we're gonna put the end to zero and we're gonna go find the impact of the golf ball. We don't have an exact frame of impact. We have a little bit before and a little after. I always like to select a little after just because the animation looks a little more realistic. So I will set down a keyframe for end and then we'll just follow the path all the way around. And then I know he picks up his T. So right about where he picks up his T, I'll probably end the animation. Now this is where the finagling comes into play because we're gonna have to mess around with the speed throughout the tracer. So the first step that I always like to do is just create easy ease on my keyframe. So I'll right click keyframe assistant and easy ease. Now we're gonna need to use the graph editor of the keyframe to speed ramp and all this stuff so that the golf ball or the speed of the shot tracer actually mimics the golf ball to the best that we can, because this is obviously all done by hand. Come up here to this little graph editor button right here, you click that. So generally the golf ball is gonna come off pretty hot off the bat. It's gonna pop and you're gonna wanna have that shot tracer kind of fly, and then it's gonna kind of start to slow down as it, as it reaches its apex, and then you'll have it speed up a little bit more as it's coming back down. I've got my point here for, for impact, so what I like to do is come to about here, I don't know, probably 80% of the golf ball's apex, maybe even a little bit more. And I will ramp this up to match where the golf ball is. So the golf ball is right there. If you can't see, it's right here. So we'll bring this to here. 
And yes, I know the golf ball isn't lined up perfectly, but that's fine, this is just a tutorial. When the golf ball comes down, it, it starts off hot and then it lands hot, right? Because it's, it's dropping down. It's not as aggressive at the end as it is in the beginning, but what we're gonna do here is we're just gonna drag this down a little bit so that we get this little curve to kind of ramp back up into hitting the ground. So from here on out, what I would basically do is just match up all the points for where I find my golf ball. And then after a certain point, like I said, you kind of lose the golf ball. So then you just kind of have to use an educated guess, if you will, to create the rest of the animation. This is always the tricky part, this little apex, because you know, if you have somebody who draws the ball or fades the ball, they may have a little curve on their, on their shot shape. And sometimes the curve can kind of go too fast. So that is, definitely the most tricky part about this whole thing and it's it's more or less just tedious than hard so what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna delete this point I'm gonna click option on my keyboard so that I can drag out the bezier This is pretty much good to go. I like to take it a step further, and this is just my personal preference. This is kind of my stylized thing, as I just add a little bit of glow on it. Now that you're done this, I like to complete the edit in Premiere. Like I said, this is a step that I do before color grading. So before going back into Premiere, you're gonna wanna mute the video file so that we can color grade that clip and uh, just have our visual effects on one layer of video. So all you gotta do is just mute it, make sure you save, and then we can close out of After Effects. So now in Premiere, you'll see that we have our After Effects file and the original video clip. And since we muted that layer, all that did was create a transparent background onto the After Effects file. Next step that I would do is, is color grade the file. Something I actually did forget that I like to do is make the shot tracer go away. We'll go back into After Effects by right clicking our clip and going to Edit Original. Pretty simple. All you're gonna wanna do is go back into Trim Paths and this time we're going to affect the start animation. I'm gonna turn this layer back on just so I can see where Justin is. I like to try and do this um, when the golfer gets in front of the golf ball. Otherwise, I would try and mask it out. Um, honestly, I've been just having the animation go forward just because it's a lot easier to not have to mask it out. So right about here, I will hit start and then I'll just scrub a little forward. Doesn't really have to be perfect, probably about there and go to 100. I will select both of these, right click and go to easy ease. And then something that I like to do just to give a little spazzazz to the animation, if you will, is just drag these all the way out. Save that and then mute the layer. So yeah, I mean, that's, that's pretty much it. That concludes today's video. There's definitely apps I think out there that do the shot tracer and stuff like that. The benefit to this, in my opinion, is that since you are creating it entirely yourself, you do have the flexibility to customize these however you want. I've put gradients on them. Like I said, you could put the glow on them. You can mess around with the taper. You can make it thicker, thinner, how, however you want. I just like the way it looks better personally. So if you enjoyed this video and you're into golf or whatever, you should check out the Pints and Putts podcast, King Wolf Creative YouTube. Uh, we got a lot of cool things coming with this YouTube channel. Very excited that we are bringing the Monday challenge back. So thank you so much for watching. If you liked the video, subscribe, leave a comment, like the video. My name's Burke Cullinane, and I'll see you soon.